Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we've got a very fun unboxing today. This came in from GPD and this of course is the uh, much awaited Win Max, which is a handheld Windows PC. And what's unique about this one is that it's running with a 10th generation i5 processor. It's got an i5 1035G7 and it's got the Iris Plus graphics, which we found in the past to be able to run uh, some decent games at low, lower resolutions and uh, at reasonable frame rates, usually around 30 to 60 frames per second. And we're going to unbox it here and then we'll get to work on it and have a full review coming up very soon on the main channel. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from GPD. They often send us their new things as they're working on them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. They are not paying for this unboxing, nor are they reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. So here is the main unit. And let's take it out of the bag here. Now, the retail price on this is going to be about $885 or so. So it's a little on the pricier side. Um, but one of the things that I've found with their stuff, even though it is on the pricier side of things, is that the design and just overall fit and finish is usually really nice. And this will probably be uh, no exception. Now, it's a lot larger than I expected. Here, let me give you another angle on it here. Uh, so you can see just how big this thing is in my hands. It is a bit heavy, but not too heavy. Uh, the controller feels great. And the big change on the controller that they haven't done in prior devices is that the sticks now click. And if you have been a fan of GPD as long as I have, you know that their uh, prior devices here would map a button off to the side of the stick to replace that uh, clicking function. And this one, thankfully, has clickable sticks, which is awesome. It's got a nice big keyboard here, almost, almost full size, kind of chiclet size, but probably one of the bigger keyboards I've seen. Uh, there's a touchpad here in the center, uh, which is nice. And again, you get the i5 with the G7 Iris graphics. Uh, this has 16 gigs of RAM on board. So it's decently configured. I don't think you can upgrade the RAM, though, although there is some options for upgrading the storage. It has some M2 uh, slots on it, and maybe we'll take it apart in a minute and see what's inside. Uh, let me see if I can power it up and see if there is any juice in the battery. So let's find the uh, power switch. There it is, right on the top. So we'll see if it comes up here. And yeah, so it's a lot bigger than what we've seen before. Now the display is an 8.2 inch display, or 8 inch display, uh, running at 1280 by 800. And although that's not like a 1080p display, at the smaller size, I think it's going to look fine. It's very similar to the resolution of maybe the Nintendo Switch display. And what's good about that is that I think that's a good pairing for the processor inside, because we've seen in prior reviews uh, that the uh, G7 on the 10th generation Intel chips can do pretty well running, again, games like GTA 5 and others at 720p at decent frame rates. So that is not a bad sign. Um, we're going to have to put this on English here for the Windows 10 installation. This is brand new, of course. I just got it in. Uh, let's take a look, though, at the ports as it's starting to boot up here. There she goes. Um, we have a full HDMI output here. Uh, you should be able to get a 4K display. Let me silence her real quick here. Uh, there she goes. Okay. There we go. Um, we have two USB 3.0 ports. We have uh, a, ooh, a Thunderbolt 3 port on the back here. Uh, so what you could do with the Thunderbolt port is you could dock this to a GPU and then make use of the i5 processor for the computational side of things and then offload the uh, graphical stuff to the GPU. And I've got one of those here. Maybe we'll try that out in the full review. It looks like you've got another USB Type-C port next to the Thunderbolt port. And I believe both of these can be used for charging. On the left-hand side here, you've got a switch for going back and forth between mouse mode and gamepad mode. On this side, it looks like we've got gigabit Ethernet and a micro SD card slot. Now, this is not a fanless device because it is running with one of those i5 chips. It's got a lot of cooling on board. Uh, one thing I found with these folks in the past is that they do tend to do a pretty good job cooling their little PCs here. So I think we should be okay there. And yeah, it does feel a bit large. It's going to take some getting used to, I think, but uh, overall, not bad. Uh, so let me get this thing uh, set up to a point where I can safely pop the case off the bottom, and we'll be right back and see what's inside. All right, so we got the bottom casing off of here, and if I don't drop everything, uh, you can see they put the battery here on the back of the outer shell, and then we've got the two cooling fans for the processor. 
Uh, we'll take a look and see how well its thermals do in the full review. These guys have always been really good with cooling, but you'll have to put up with some fan noise, of course. Uh, this looks to me like an NVMe drive, and this is the one upgradable thing on this computer. You can't upgrade the RAM, but you can upgrade the drive. This is a PCI Express uh, X4 slot, so you can put something else in there, but of course you've got that Thunderbolt, so I think you could do a lot more with that. So that is the inside. I'm going to put this thing back together now, and then we'll see what else is in the box. All right, we got it put back together here again. One tip for you, actually two tips for you on taking it apart. The first is you want to make sure that you get the screw that's underneath the warranty sticker here. I'm guessing that might void any warranty, so be careful with that. Uh, and then the two on the back here keep everything held together. So you want to get those two off the back, this one in the center, and then all the other ones around it. I did need a little spudger to get everything separated. They're uh, very good at their design and things really are tightly snapped together so uh, you should be uh, good to go when you have all that done. So we're going to come back to the main unit in our review but there's more stuff in the box. So we have our little instruction guide here. So it starts off with uh, the Chinese version and then the English one is on page 24 and there's a few other languages here as well. And then we've got what's probably the power adapter so we have our USB-C cable for power delivery. And then we've got the power adapter. And this is, of course, a USB-C power adapter. And it looks like it is uh, 20 volts at 3 and a quarter amps max. I'm guessing that's probably, what, about 45 watts, give or take. Uh, the thermal profile of this, so it might be maybe a 60-watt power supply, uh, the TDP on this is uh, 15 to 25 watts, according to their specifications. So there you go. That is the GPD Win Max, and this is going to be uh, now put through its paces. We're going to do all of our analysis of it to see how it works, and I think it's going to do pretty well with the games that we're going to test on it. We've seen on other Iris Plus devices like this one that you can usually get some decent frame rates at the lower 720p level resolution, which is what this display is at. But it looks pretty nice, and again, we'll have uh, some more detail on this very soon, so stay tuned for that. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.